Hi everyone, in this video we are going to solve O-Level's Additional Mathematics Paper 1 in a session October-November 2021 Paper 1-2. So let's begin with the first question. In question number 1, the diagram shows the graph of a cubic function y equals to f of x. The intercepts of the curve with the axis are all integers. Okay, now in A part, find the set of values of x for which the function is less than 0. Okay, so we need to find the intervals, uh, the values of x, the set of values of x when the function is negative. So as you can see, in this uh, curve, the function is negative and these points, the function is negative. So we can say when the x values between minus 3 and 1, the function is less than 0. And then when x values are more than 5, it is less than 0, right? So the set of values, we can say minus 3 is less than x is less than uh, 1. The function is less than 0 and uh, x is greater than 5. The function is less than zero. Now for the B part, find an expression for f of x. Okay, so we need to find uh, the value of the function, the value, uh, the equation of the cubic function by using the given graph. Okay, uh, so it is a cubic function. We have given the x-intercepts and the y-intercept we have given, right? So first we need to write down uh, the factored form of the polynomial uh, equation uh, function that is y equals to a x minus p, x minus q, and x minus r. Okay, so this p, q, r, these are the zeros, or we can say the x-intercepts, right? So let me write down the x-intercept. So the x-intercept is minus 3, 1, and 5. So just substitute the values, minus 3, 1, and 5. So this is y equals to a, x minus minus 3 would be plus 3. Here we have x minus 1, and here we have x minus 5, right? Now we need to find the value for a by using the value of the y-intercept. So as you can see on the curve, the y-intercept is minus 5, and here the x value is 0. So we need to use this y-intercept to get the value for a. So we can say the point, we need to substitute x equals to 0, and y is minus 5. Okay, so when y is minus 5, we have a, x is 0, 0 plus 3, we have 0 minus 1 and 0 minus 5, right? So now we have minus 5 equals to a into 3 into minus 1 into minus 5. Negative times negative is positive and 3 times 5 is 15. So minus 5 divides 15. So this would be uh, minus um, 1 over five, uh, 3. Because 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 3 is 15. And this would be the value for a. Okay, now the expression for f of x we have is um, y equals to the a values minus 1 by 3, x plus 3, x minus 1, and x minus 5. Now for question number 2 in a part, given that uh, this expression equals to this, find the exact values of the constants a, b, c. So these are the exponents of a, b, c. Right. So first we need to use the left hand side and the left hand side we have given is uh, x power 1 by 3, y power 1 by 3, z square, y square over we have x power minus 3, z power minus 3 and z power 1 by 2. Okay, so let me shift all the um, terms into the numerator, right? So we have here x power is 1 by 3 and uh, x power is positive 3. I just shift this x into the numerator becomes positive. And then solving for y power 1 by 3, we have y squared as well and no y in the denominator. Okay, and then z square and then uh, z power positive 3 and z power minus 1 by 2. This turns to minus, right? Okay, let me solve the exponents now. So first the x exponents are 1 by 3 and plus 3 would be 10 by 3. So we can say the x power is 10 by 3. Okay, now for the y we have uh, 1 by 3 plus 2 would be 7 out of 3. This is 7 by 3. 
and for z we have uh, 2 plus 3 is 5 so we have 5 minus 1 by 2 and then plus 5 would be 9 by 2 this is 9 by 2 okay so now we have a right hand side is uh, x power a y power b and z power c right so what are the values for a b c so we can say the a value is 10 by 3 b is 7 by 3 and c value is 9 by 2 part b solve the equation okay so we have 5 let me rewrite this as 2 power 2p and 2 power 1 because 2p plus 1 bases are same we can add the powers minus 17 we have 2 power p and then plus 3 this would be equals to 0 okay so this is um, 2 times 5 is 10 10 and uh, 2 power 2p minus 17 we have 2 power p and then plus 3 this would be equals to 0 now we can factorize it so we have uh, 10 and 3 so we can say 10 times 3 is equals to 30 so we need to find the factors of 30 that gives minus 17 so 2 times 15 is equals to 30 and minus 2 minus 15 makes minus 17 let me break the mid term so we have 10 2 power 2p minus 2 2 power p minus 15 we have 2 exponent p and plus 3 this would be equals to 0 now let me take 2 common and 2 exponent p common and we are left with 2 times 5 is 10 right and 2 power p is also left and we did this so it's minus 1 just okay let me take negative 3 common because 3 times 5 makes 15 so 5 2 power p and then minus 1 okay so the factors we have are 5 2 power p and minus 1 this is the first factor and the second is 2 2 power p and minus 3 we need to find the value for p uh, so first we need to put both of them one by one equals to zero. So let me solve the first one 5 2 power p minus 1 equals to 0. So from here 5 2 power p equals to 1. So 2 power p equals to 1 by 5. Okay, so this power is 1 by 5. So we need to find the value for p but p is in the power. So we need to do the uh, taking log on both sides. So we have p and then ln 2 equals to ln 1 by 5 right so what is the value for p so we will get the value for p by doing ln 1 by 5 divides ln 2 right we will get the value for p so we have 1 divides 5 taking a ln of answer uh, divide ln 2 is minus 2.32 uh, one nine so minus two point three two two we can say p is minus two point three two two correct to three decimal place okay now for the second we can say two power two times two power p minus three equals to zero so two two power p equals to three so two power p equals to three by two taking ln uh, on both sides to get to make the power over here so uh, p ln 2 would be equals to ln 2 by 3 by 2 so the p value is ln 3 by 2 divides ln 2 so the value is first 3 by 2 ln of answer divides ln 2 is 0 0.5849 so 0 0.585 correct to three decimal place so p would be 0 0.585 so these are the two values for p question number three in a part write this as a single logarithm to base 10 okay so we have three here 
so we can say 3 if we can take base 10 log base 10 10 is 1 log when the base and this term is same we got the answer 1 right so this is just 3 times 1 is 3 that stays the same so we have to we can take log a as log base 10 a minus 4 log b would be log base 10 b right so now we have uh, log 10 this is 10 cube plus log base 10 a square minus log base 10 b exponent 4 right now we have log base 10 we have 10 cube is 1000 plus log base 10 we have a square minus log base 10 b exponent 4 now we need to express as a single logarithm to the base 10 so we have log base 10 and this would be 1000 times a square because we have positive and plus we need to uh, multiply and subtraction we need to divide it with b power 4 so this is the answer uh, in a single logarithm for part b solve the equation okay so basically we need to find the value for unknown variable that is a so here we are using the change of base formula for this because log a4 log 4a so we have 3 this would be log a um, log 4 4 over log 4a plus 2 log 4a equals to 7 right okay now we have uh, log 4 4 uh, as we did in the first part that is log a and a would be equals to 1 so log 4 4 is just 1 so we are left with 3 uh, 1 over log 4 a plus 2 log 4 a equals to 7 right we need to take the lcm with log 4 a so we have 3 um, plus 2 log 4a square equals to 7 this is going to uh, multiply log 4a right okay now let me arrange it this with, this is 2 log 4a square minus 7 log 4a and then plus 3 this would be equals to 0 okay now let me uh, factorize this so 2 times 3 is 6 and we have uh, 6 times 1 is 6 and minus 6 minus 1 is minus 7 right let me break the it down so we have 2 log 4a square minus 6 log 4a minus 1 log 4a plus 3 equals to 0 okay now we have um, let me take two common and log 4a square common no it's not a it is no this is a square okay okay so we are left with log 4a and minus 2 times 3 is 6 making minus 1 common we are left with log 4a and minus 3 okay now we have two factors let me solve one by one separately we have the first factor is log 4a minus 3 and the other is 2 log 4a minus 1 equals to 0 now put one both of them equals to 0 so when log 4a minus 3 equals to 0 this would be log 4a equals to 3 right and here the value for a is 4 power 3 and what is 4 power 3 uh, 4 cube is 64 so a value is 64 okay solving the second one uh, we can say 2 log 4 a minus 1 equals to 0 so from here log 4 a equals to 1 by 2 and the value for a is 4 power 1 by 2 or we can say uh, square root of 4 is equals to 2 so a value is 2 so the a value is 2 and 64
question number four solve the equation where x is between minus pi to plus pi radian give your answer in terms of pi okay uh, so first what we need to do we need to put this equals to theta let's say theta is equals to 2x plus pi by 3 right so we can say cot theta minus k root of 3 equals to 0 right and cot theta is equals to square root of 3 and cot is basically a reciprocal of tangent so this cot is basically 1 over tan theta so let me solve for uh, tan by taking the reciprocal. So tan theta is equals to 1 over square root of 3. Right. Now we need to find the quadrants where the tangent is positive. So if I can draw the coordinate system. Right. So in the first, uh, all trigonometric ratios are positive. Then sine is positive and then tangent is positive and then cosine is positive right so in the first we use um, uh, theta pi minus theta pi plus theta and 2 pi minus theta right so we have tan theta is uh, 1 over square root of 3 it's positive and tangent is positive in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant right so we need to solve for theta so from here theta is tangent inverse of 1 over square root of 3 right so square root of 3 1 divide answer 1 by square root of 3 doing tan inverse we have 30 and what is 30 30 is pi by 6 in terms of radian theta is pi by 6 okay now tangent is positive in first and third quadrant so we can say for the first quadrant and for third quadrant for first quadrant we will get theta that is the same that is pi by 6 but for the third quadrant, we need to add pi plus pi by 6. So this is um, 1 plus 1 by 6 would be 7 by 6. So this is 7 pi by 6. Right. Now, as you can see, we have given the domain that is from minus pi to plus pi. It means we need to add 2 pi and subtract 2 pi. So let me add 2 pi. We will get the two values and subtracting 2 pi, we will get the two other values. Okay, now adding 2 pi in these two. So in 1 by 6, add 2, we have 13 pi by 6. And in 7 by 6, um, add 2, we have 19 pi by 6. Right. Now when we subtract 2, 1 by 6, subtracting 2 would be minus 11 pi by 6. And 7 by 6, subtract 2 is minus 5 pi by 6. So these are the values of theta. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 values for theta. Okay. So if I can say, uh, let me write down all the values of theta. So we have theta equals to pi by 6, 7 pi by 6, 13 pi by 6, uh, 19 pi by 6, minus 11 pi by 6, and minus 5 pi by 6. So these six are the values for theta but uh, we know that theta is basically equals to 2x plus pi by 3 and the domain is for x. Okay, so we need to find the value for x. How can we solve for x? Okay, so if uh, from here, if we can do when the theta uh, minus pi by 3 and then times by 1 by 2, we will get the value for x, right? Now let's solve for the values for x. If I can do here, we will get the x values. So x is basically equals to these are the values of theta from all these values one by one we need to subtract pi by three and then times by one by two let's start with the one first one one by six a pi by six is one by six and then subtracting one by three and times 0 0.5 is minus 11, one minus pi by 12 
is the first value. Now for the second is 7 pi by 6. Okay, now 7 by 6 subtracting 1 by 3 times 0 0.5 is 5 pi by 12. Right, now for the third is 13 pi by 6. Now 13 by 6 minus 1 by 3 adding, uh, multiplying 2.5, 0 0.5 is 11 pi by 12. The next is 19 by 6 pi. 19 divide 6 minus 1 by 3 times 0 0.5 is 17 pi by 12 minus 11 by 6. Minus 11 by 6 minus 1 by 3 times 0 0.5 is minus 13 pi by 12. And for the last is 5 minus 5 by 6 minus 1 by 3 times 0 0.5 is minus 7 pi by 12. Okay, so these are the values of x. Now, uh, the values of x must lies between minus pi to plus pi, that is minus 1 pi to plus 1 pi. So, let's see what values are in the range, right? So, the first we have minus 1 by 12 is 0 0.8. So, this lies in the range. 5 by 12 is 0 0.4. This again lies in the range. 11 by 12 is 0 0.9, yes. 17 by 12 is 1.4, it's more. Minus 13 divides 12 is minus 1.08, no. Minus 7 divides 12 is 0 minus 0 0.5, yes. Okay, so the final answer, the values for x we can say are minus pi by 12, 5 pi by 12, 11 pi by 12, and minus 7 pi by 12. These are the four values of theta in terms of pi. Yes. Question number five, find the possible values of a constant c for which the line y equals to c is tangent to the curve. Okay, so y equals to c is basically a straight horizontal line. Straight horizontal line right and it is tangent when uh, the line is tangent to the curve it means it exactly touches uh, the graph at one point right um, touch at only one point okay so let's visualize this so let me draw the graph for this sine function Okay, so the sign starts from the uh, equation of axis point. So this is basically the curve for sine x. If we can say this is the curve for the sine x, right? Okay, and uh, y equals to c is a straight horizontal line. This, 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 any line y equals to c, right? And it is tangent to this curve. When it is tangent to this curve, and we know that tangent uh, touches the curve at exactly one point. So it touch at the maximum point. This can be the tangent or it touch at the minimum point. This can be the tangent. This, these are the y equals to c line. And this is the y equals to c line. So we can have two values for the tangent c because it touch at the maximum because when it touch in, in the middle, so it is uh, it is not a tangent because it touched the curve at two points, right? And we know that for sine theta, we have the maximum value that is one, and the minimum value is minus 1 because we know that sine lies between minus 1 and plus 1 right so we have sine if sine theta lies between 1 and minus 1 so it, this is obvious that sine x by 3 also lies between minus 1 and plus 1 so we have y equals to minus uh, equals to 5 into 1 plus 4 this value or y equals to 5 into minus 1 plus 4, putting the maximum value of sine x by 3 and the minimum value. So we have 5 plus 4 that is equals to 9 and from here we have minus 5 plus 4 this is equals to minus 1. So here we can say that y equals to 9 
or y equals to minus 1. So these are, are the two straight horizontal lines and the values of c are c can be 9 or c can be minus 1. So these are the two possible values of the constant for which the line y equals to c at 9 or at minus 1 is tangent to the given curve. Question number 6. Do not use a calculator in this question. Uh, the polynomial p of x where a, b are integers is divided by 2x plus 1. Okay, when it is divisible by 2x plus 1, it means we can say 2x plus 1 equals to 0 and the value of x is minus 1 by 2. So it means uh, when it is divisible by this information tell us that p of minus 1 by 2 equals to 0. It is divisible, it leaves a remainder of 0. Uh, when p of x is divided by x plus 1, the remainder is minus 24. So we have a remainder in this case. It means p of minus 1 equals to negative of 24. Now in a part, find the value of a and of b. So by using these two information, we can find the values for a and b. So let's start with the first information that we can say p of minus 1 by 2 give you the answer 0. Right. So just substitute minus 1 by 2 here. So we have 10 minus 1 by 2 whole cube and plus a minus 1 by 2 square and minus 10 we have minus 1 by 2 and then plus b. Right. Okay, now for the simplification, a minus 1 cube is minus 1 and 2 cube is 8. So we have here we have minus 10 over 8 plus a here we have 1 by 4 minus uh, minus plus we have 10 by 2 and then plus b this will equals to 0 right okay so from here we can say um, if we further simplify uh, we have for a a by 4 we have plus b and uh, a and the b. Now the constant terms we have uh, minus 10 by 8 and uh, plus 10 by 2. This is 15 by 4. Plus 15 divides 4 equals to 0. Now let me take 4 LCM. So we have a plus 4 b equals to minus of 15. Right? We can multiply the 4 on the other side. So this is my first equation and we can say from here a would be minus 15 minus 4b. This is my first equation. Right. Now by using the second information, p of minus 1 is negative of 24. So let me find p of minus 1 and put it equals to minus 24. So p of minus 1. So 10 minus 1 cube plus a minus 1 square minus 10 minus 1 plus b equals to minus 24, right? So minus 1 cube is minus 1. So here we have minus 10 plus a uh, plus 10 plus b equals to negative of 24. This is minus 24. So we have a plus b plus 10 and minus 10 is equals to 0. This is minus 24. Right, this is my second equation. Now substituting the a value here, so we have minus 15 minus 4b plus b equals to negative of 24. So from here, minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3b equals to minus 24 and shifting this 15 becomes positive 15. So minus 24 plus 15 would be minus 9 and divides negative of 3 would be 3. So b value we got is 3. Now putting that b value here, so a will be minus 15 minus 4 times 3. So we have 4 times 3 is 12 and minus 15 minus 12 is minus 27. So the a value is negative of 27 and the b value is positive 3. Okay, now for the b part, find an expression for the polynomial as a product of three linear factors. Okay. So first we need to write down the polynomial p of x by using the values for a and b minus 27 and 3. So we have 10x cube, right, plus a value is minus 27x square 
minus 10x and the b is positive of 3. So this is a polynomial p of x and from the first part we know that it is divisible by um, 2x plus 1. Right? So when x is minus 1 by 2, it is divisible, so it leaves a remainder of 0. So we need to use a method of synthetic division here. So if we do the synthetic division, let me do it here. Right. So just write down the um, coefficients. Right. So we have a coefficient for x cube is 10. For x squared is minus 27, for x we have minus 10 and the constant is 3. So it is divisible by 2x plus 1, so x value is minus 1 by 2. So in this, just take the first term as it is. And minus 1 by 2 times by 10, minus 1 by 2 times 10 is minus 5. And then minus 5 and minus 27 is minus 32. And times by minus 1 by 2 is 16 and 16 minus 10 equals to 6 and 6 times minus 1 by 2 is negative of 3 and negative 3 and plus 3 would be equals to 0. Right. Now we got the uh, expression in terms of a quadratic expression and these are the coefficients for that quadratic expression. So we can say the polynomial p of x, we can write x my, uh, plus 1 by 2 and the other are 10x square minus 32x and plus 6. So these are the coefficient for x square, x and the constant. Now we need to factorize this one to get to convert this p of x into the product of three linear factors. Okay, so how can we factorize this expression? Let me take two common first. So we have p of x, um, x plus 1 by 2. If I can take two common, 2 times 5 is 10x square and 2 times 16 is 32 and 2 times 3 is 6, right? Okay, now we can cancel this 2 and from here we have p of x equals to 2 is multiplying here. So 2x and 2 uh, by 1 is just 1. 2 by 2 is 1. 2x plus 1 and this uh, factors we can say 5 times 3 uh, is 15. And how can we make 16? Mm, 5 times 3 is equals to 15. And uh, 1 times 15 is 15. Right? And if we can say minus 1 minus 15, we will get minus of 16. Right? Let me break the mid term. So we have 5x square minus x, k, x minus 15x plus 3. Right? So p of x we have is... 2x plus 1 and from here let me take x common we have 5x minus 1 and taking minus uh, 3 common we have 5x minus 1 right so the product of three factors p of x is 2x plus 1 we have x minus 3 and 5x minus 1 so these are the product of three factors three linear factors Part C, write down the remainder when P of X is divided by X. So it is just a one mark question. So we can use a remainder theorem here. So when it is divided by X, it means the factor is X minus 0, right? And we can say X is equals to 0. So just substitute the X value equals to 0 and we can find the remainder. So we have P of 0. Uh, this is a polynomial. We have just substitute 10. We have 0 cube plus minus 27 we have 0 squared minus 10 times 0 and then plus 3 so what is 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 3 so the remainder is 3 and this is a remainder when p of x is divided by um, x the remainder we got is positive 3 Question number seven in A part, the diagram shows a triangle OAC where OA is A, OB is B, OC is C. The point B lies on the line AC such that AB ratio BC is M ratio N. So this is M and this is N where M and N are constants. In the first part, write down AB in terms of A and B. So A to B. Okay, so basically AB follows a path of A to O and O to B. AO 
plus OB and AO is minus A and AB is B. So minus A plus B. Now for the second part, uh, write down BC in terms of uh, B and C. BC. Okay, so BC follows a path of B to O and O to C. BO plus OC. BO is negative B, positive C. Right, now for third part, hence uh, show that N times A plus M times C equals to N, M plus N uh, times B. Okay, so, so by using this information, uh, MN, we have uh, AB ratio BC equals to M over n m ratio n in terms of fraction we can write down the ratio cross multiplication n times of a b equals to m times of b c we know the value for a b and b c from the first two parts we just substitute the values n times a b is b minus a m times b c is c minus b now we have n b minus n a equals to m c minus m b Okay, so we can take B common and shifting the A and C this side. So we have uh, NB plus MB equals to uh, MC plus NA, right? And from here, we can say uh, B is common and M plus N equals to um, NA plus MC. So this is exactly the same, like Na plus Mc equals to B into M plus N, right? Now for the B part, given that uh, we have this, find the values of each of the constant lambda and mu, okay? So that's easy. First, we need to simplify this um, matrix. So first, we can say that lambda is multiplying two lambda and one lambda plus minus 4 mu minus 4 times mu minus 4 times 1 plus 4 and 7 mu minus 7 this is equals to um, 4 lambda plus 4 minus 2 lambda minus 2 right now we can make the equations one by one so the first equation we have is we have 2 lambda minus 4 mu plus 4 equals to 4 lambda plus 4, right? Okay, so let me simplify. So we have 2 lambda minus 4 lambda minus 4 mu equals to this 4 is cancelled with this 4. It's just 0, right? So we have uh, minus 2 lambda and minus 4 mu equals to 0. So taking negative 2 common, we are left with lambda min plus 2 mu equals to 0. So from here, lambda plus 2 mu equals to 0 and the lambda value equals to negative 2 mu. So this is my first equation. Now for second equation, we have 1 lambda plus 7 mu minus 7 equals to minus 2 lambda minus 2. Okay, so we have 1 lambda uh, plus 2 lambda plus 7 mu minus 7 and plus 2 equals to 0. We have 3 lambda min plus 7 mu minus 5 equals to 0. Right, this is my second equation. Now substituting lambda equals to minus 2 mu, we can find the value for mu. So 3 minus 2 mu plus 7 mu equals to my positive of 5 right so minus 6 mu plus 7 mu equals to 5 so from here we have just left with 1 and equals to 5 so the mu value is 5 just substituting the mu here so we have lambda equals to minus 2 times 5 and this is equals to 10 so we can say the lambda value is 10 and the value for mu is positive of 5 so it's negative 10, not 10, just because minus 2 times 5 is minus 10. Question number 8 in A part, 
A five digit number is made using the digit 0, 1, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 9. No digit may be used more than once in any five digit number. So no repetition, it means we have to use a concept of permutation. Right. Find how many such five digit numbers are even and greater than 50,000. Okay, for even and greater than 50,000. So first we need to pick how many are even. So 0 is an even number, 4 is an even number, 6 is an even number. So these three are even. And how many uh, digits, um, five digit number, which digit make more than 50,000? Okay, so if it starts with the 5, 6, 7 or 9, we will get the number that is greater than 50,000. Okay, so here we have overlapping. Six is even and six, if we start from six, it will, we will get a more than 50,000. So here we need to use two cases, right? Okay, so now for case one. In case one, if we start, start with um, five, seven, and nine. Five, seven, and nine. Right. So let's start with the five, seven, nine. So we have a five digit number. Keep in mind. So we need to make a five digit number. One, two, three, four, five. So the starting can be five, seven or nine. So for starting, we have three options. Let's say I start with five. So I use the five. Right. And uh, it must be even. The number is even when uh, the last digit of that number is even. So how many are even? One, zero. 4 and 6, 3 digits are even. So the last option, the last digit have option, 3 options for the last digit if we select 0 for the last. Now we are left with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We are left with 5 digits for 5 options, 4, uh, four options and 3 options. So let me multiply all of them. So we have 3 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 3 so 540 for the first case okay now we have a case 2 in case 2 if we start with 6 with a digit 6 okay again a 5 digit number we have 1 2 3 4 Five. Now the starting must be a digit six. So the first, uh, the option for the first digit is just one option we have because we are starting from six, right? And six is also an even number. So how many even numbers are left? Two even numbers are left. So we have two options for the last digit. It can be zero or it can be four. So if I can take z uh, four, right? So I use the six. I use the four. So one, two, three, four, five. Five options are left for the second digits and then four options and then three options. So one times five times four times three times two, we have 120. To find the number of ways, we need to add both of them. We need to find the total basically. So the total, we have 540 plus 120. Uh, 540 plus 120 is 660. So we can make 660 different five digit numbers that are even and greater than 50,000 by using the these uh, digits. Okay, now moving to B part, the number of combination of N object taken four at a time. So the number of combination of N objects taken four at a time is equals to six times number of combination of n objects taken two at a time. Calculate the value for n, right? So that's pretty easy. So let me open the formula for permutation, uh, combination, sorry. We have a formula for combination ncr equals to n factorial over r factorial and n minus r factorial. So here the r value is four and two, right? So we have n factorial over 4 factorial into n minus 4 factorial and this is 6 times n factorial over 2 factorial into n minus 2 factorial. 
right so as you can see we can cancel then factorials from both sides and here we are left with 1 over 4 is basically um, 1 over 4 factorial and n minus 4 factorial this is equals to 6 over 2 factorial into n minus 2 factorial so let me do a cross multiplication so we have 2 factorial n minus 2 factorial here and we have 6 times 4 factorial and n minus 4 factorial right so we have 2 factorial we can open it n minus 2 n minus 3 into n minus 4 factorial and this is 6 times 4 times 3 times 2 factorial and n minus 4 factorial so we can cancel the factorials n minus 4 and 2 factorial right now we are left with the n minus 2 and n minus 3 and from here uh, 6 times 4 times 3 6 times 4 times 3 is 72 okay so let me multiply it so we have uh, n square um, and then minus 3n and then minus 2n and then plus 6 equals to 72 so here we have n square minus 5n and 72 and minus 6 or shifting it here so from 70 uh, minus 72 and plus 6 we have minus 66 equals to 0 right now we have a quadratic equation we cannot factorize it it is better to use a quadratic formula to get the values for n um, so if we use a quadratic formula a value is 1 b is minus 5 and c value is negative of 66 so n is equals to negative of b that is minus 5 minus 5 plus minus square root b value square minus 5 square is 25 minus 4 times a times c so minus 4 times a value is 1 times c value is minus 66 this is minus 240 64 plus 264 and then dividing by 2 times of a a is 1 so 2 times 1 is just 2 right and then adding 25 289 and what is 289 the square root of 289 is 17 right so we have 5 plus minus 17 divides 2. We have two values for n from here. So let's solve one by one. So 5 plus 17 divides 2 is 11 and equals to 11. And 5 minus 17 divides 2 and equals to negative of 6. Right. So we have two values for n, but as we know that n is representing the number of combination of n objects. So as you can see in the question, the number of combinations of n objects, so objects never be negative, right? So the answer for the number of object is just 11. We are not using 6. Question number 9. The diagram shows a circle center at O. The radius is 12 cm and the rectangle A, B, C, D. The diagonal A to C and B to D intersect at O. The side A, B is 6 and A, D. A, B and A, D of rectangle have length 6 cm and 4 cm respectively. This is 6, this is 6. This is 4 and this is 4. So this is also 4 cm. This is 6 cm. Right. Um, the points M and N lies on the circumference of a circle. M and N, these are the points lies on the circumference of a circle such that M, A, C, M, A, C and N, D, B are straight lines. Okay. Now in A part, show that the angle A, O, D, A, O, D, this angle is uh, 1.176 radian correct to three decimal places okay so we need to find out this angle so for this if i break this shape from the middle this drawing by drawing a straight line so we know this is six six and six this is four this is four okay so and the half of this if this side is complete length a to d is four so this length is two this length is 2. If this is 6, this length is 3, this length is 3, right? So what we need to do basically, this is a right angle triangle A, O and some point, let's say uh, X, 
we take this point x so a o x is a right angle triangle first we need to find this angle by using socatua and then times by 2 to get the whole angle a o d right so uh, for we have uh, angle opposite is given and the adjacent is given so we need to use tangent the ratio for tan theta we can say tan theta is opposite is 2 and adjacent is 3 so you can find it in radian so first converting the calculator into radians we have 2 by 3 and now tangent inverse of 2 by 3 is 0 0.588 so this is the first angle 0 0.5880 right now we need to find the bottom one so times by 2 so it is in the whole angle we can say uh, a o d is 1.1760 so correct to three decimal place just 1.176 um, right Okay, now moving to B part, find the parameter of the shaded region. Okay, parameter is basically a sum of all sides. So we need to find for the shaded region. So just this region is shaded, right? So for this, we need to find uh, this length because this length is also shaded MM. So how can we find this length? By using the formula of arc length, we can find this length. So arc length of an arc m n is equals to s equals to r theta r is the radius we know the radius is 12 and we need to find the angle theta so this is the angle theta so this whole circle is 360 or degree but in terms of radian it is 2 pi so we got the angle that is 1.176 this angle is 1.176 subtracting 2 pi so we can say 2 I subtract answer is 5.107 this angle is 5.107 this is angle theta right so just substituting here so the s value is 12 times 5.107 so 12 times 5.107 is 61.2 so this is the arc length this is shaded this m and we got is 61.284 right and now we have a b is given b c is given c d is given these are shaded right okay now we need to find m a and n d because both are same we know m to o is 12 but we don't know m a first we need to find a to o right so again it is a right angle triangle a o x this is 2 this is 3 we can easily find this the hypotenuse by using a pythagoras theorem so we can find uh, o to a is square root of 2 square plus 3 square so 2 square is 4 3 square is 9 and 4 plus 9 is 13 so this is square root of 13 right so this side is square root of 13 so a to o is square root of 13 and the whole is 12 and what would be this side so it is 12 minus square root of 13 12 minus square root of 13 yes it's 12 this is uh, and d is also 12 minus square root of 13 now let me find out the parameter parameter is basically m to n this arc length that is 61.284 and then we have n a this is shaded a b is shaded b c is shaded c d portion is shaded and d n portion is shaded right so let me add all of them to get the parameter right so we can say the parameter of the shaded region is uh, the arc length m n that is 61.284 uh, plus uh, we have um, N, uh, MA that we got 12 minus square root of 13 and ND is also 12 minus square root of 13 right and then we have AB, BC and um, D to C so AB is 6, DC is also 6 and BC is just 4 right so let me simplify it and we have uh, 6 plus 6 plus 4, 6 plus 6 plus 4 is 16, plus 12 plus 12 is makes 40 and uh, plus 61.284 we have this term. So 
we got it equals to 101.284 and then minus 2 square root of 13 because minus 1 minus 1 so minus 2 square root of 13 and then add 101.284 is 94.07 or we can say 94.1 centimeter is the parameter of the shaded region part c find the area of the shaded region okay so let's see which region is shaded so area of the shaded region just this region is shaded subtracting this rectangle right so for area of a shaded region first we need to find the um, uh, area of a sector of a circle that is the sector m o n this sector of a circle this area and then subtracting these three triangles a o b b o c and c o d these three triangles we are going to subtract from this sector we will get the area of the shaded region so first we need to find the area of a sector of a circle in terms of radian we can write down the formula for area of sector area of sector of a circle in terms of uh, radian is half r square theta okay so we have half radius is 12 so 12 square and theta we got is um, as you can see we have 5.107 this is a value for theta 5.107 right so we have 12 square is 144 times 5.107 and then times by 0 0.5 this is equals to 367.704 so this is the uh, complete uh, arc length uh, sorry uh, area of a sector uh, the sector this this big sector right and now we need to subtract these three small triangles because these are not shaded so area of a triangle a b o is exactly the same as area of a triangle uh, d c d c o right so just times by two and then this one is different so let me find the area of a triangle a o b and um, c o d so we have half base times height so let me find the height for this if we break it into the this one so the height this triangle base is two, uh, 6 and the height is this is 2 this height is 2 because the whole is um, whole height is equals to uh, 4 right so if we can say the area of a triangle a o b this is half base times height half base is 6 and the height is 2 so 6 times 2 and this is equals to 6 so area of this triangle is 6 area of this triangle is exactly equals to 6 right now let me find for this one area of a triangle b o c this is half base times height base is 4 and the height we have is 3 4 times 3 2 times 2 is 4 and 2 times 3 would be equals to 6 and this one is also 6 so we need to add 6 6 6 so 6 plus 6 plus 6 would be 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 18 so subtracting 18 from the area of a sector of a circle we will get the shaded area okay so we can say shaded area is from area of a sector that is 367.704 subtracting the area of three uh, triangles so we have 367.704 subtract 18 is equals to 349.704 uh, or we can say that 350 meter square centimeter square is the area for the shaded region question number 10 the diagram shows the graph of a curve for x is greater than negative 2 the points a and b lies on the curve such that the x coordinates of uh, a and of b are minus 1 and 2 respectively in a part find the exact y coordinates of uh, a and of b okay so we know the x coordinates for a and b are uh, minus 1 and 2 we can substitute x equals to minus 1 and x is equals to 2 into the curve to get the y coordinate 
okay so we can say at um, point a the x coordinate is equals to minus 1 so what is the y coordinate so y is equals to 1 over minus 1 plus 2 whole square plus 3 over minus 1 plus 2 so this is equals to minus 1 plus 2 is 1 and 1 squared is just 1 and 1 by 1 is 1 and minus 1 plus 2 is again 1 plus 3 this is equals to 4 so the y coordinate at a is 4 and now at b when the x is minus 2 sorry positive 2 the y is equals to 1 over 2 plus 2 whole square plus 3 over 2 plus 2 so this is 1 over 2 plus 2 is 4 and 4 squared is 16 plus 3 over 2 plus 2 is just 4 right so let's solve it 1 out of 16 plus 3 out of 4 is 0 0.8125 so these are the y coordinates at point a and at point b right now moving to part b uh, find the area of the shaded region enclosed by the line a b and the curve giving your answer in the form of p by q minus ln r where p q and r are integers okay so shaded region that is enclosed by the line and the curve okay so uh, what we need to do here as you can see this shape a b 2 and minus 1 this shape is a trapezium right so basically we need to find the area of this trapezium right and then we need to uh, and we need to find the area under the curve by integrating this function we need to find area under this curve and subtracting uh, from area of the trapezium we need to subtract the area under the curve because this is area is not shaded we will get the area that is shaded one right so let's start with the area of a trapezium first area of trapezium is half sum of parallel sides and then times by uh, length or we can say the height right so first we need to find the area of a trapezium so area of a trapezium will be half we need what is the sum of parallel sides so the two parallel side, this side is parallel and this side is parallel. We need to find the sum of these two parallel side. And here the y coordinate is 4 and at B the y coordinate is 0 0.8125. So we need to add these two. 4 plus 0 0.8125 and times by height. So what is the height? Height is from minus 1 to 2. So we can say 2 minus minus 1. This is 3. So that times by 3. So we let me simplify uh, 4 plus 0 0.8125 and then times by 3 and then divide 2. The area of a trapezium is 7.21875. So this is 7.21875. This is the area of a trapezium, the whole shape, right? Now we need to find the area under this curve this area under this curve and because this is not shaded so we need to subtract that area from the whole trapezium we will get the shaded area right now how can we find area under the curve area under the curve is basically the integration of y with respect to dx and it is a definite integral because it is between minus 1 to 2 the x values are between minus 1 to 2 so let me integrate it uh, let me go to the next sheet for this uh, keep in mind the y function is 1 over um, x plus 2 whole square and plus 3 over x plus 2 okay so we have integration uh, minus 1 to 2 1 over x plus 2 whole square plus 3 over x plus 2 dx okay let me break it so it is minus 1 to 2 this is x plus 2 power minus 2 dx 
plus 3 is outside, integration minus 1 to 2, 1 over x plus 2 dx. Okay, so its derivative is complete. We use a power rule, uh, minus 2 plus 1 over minus 2 plus 1 and plus 3. This is just ln of x plus 2. And on both, we need to apply the upper and the lower limit, minus 1 to 2. It's a definite integral, so we are not adding constants. Uh, now we have uh, x plus 2 power is minus 1 over minus 1 and this is plus 3 ln of x plus 2 for minus 1 to 2. Okay, now putting the upper limit that is 2. So we have minus 1 over 2 plus 2 plus 3 ln 2 plus 2. This is upper limit. Minus low limit is negative 1. So minus 1 over minus 1 plus 2 plus 3 ln minus 1 plus 2. Right. Now the next we need to simplify minus 1 by 4 plus 3 ln 4 minus we have uh, minus 1 plus 2 is just 1. So minus 1 plus 3 ln 1 ln 1 is 0. We can find log of 1 is 0. So this term is just 0. 0 times 3 is 0. So we have minus 1 by 4 plus 3 ln 4. Negative times negative is positive 1. So we have minus 1 divides 4 and then plus 1 is 3 by 4. So this is 3 by 4 plus 3 ln 4. So let me simplify. Um, we have uh, ln, ln 4 and then times by 3 and then add 3 by 4. So 4.9. So this is the area is 4.9088. So this is the area under the curve 4.9088. Right. Now we need to find the area of the shaded region. So what we need to do for shaded area we need to do area of a trapezium subtract area under the curve right so the area of a trapezium we got is so this is the area of a trapezium. So we can write it as 7.21875. 7.21875. Subtracting the area under the curve. This area 4.9088. So we can say 7.21875. Subtract answer is 2. 2.301 square unit is the area for the shaded region but as we know uh, we need to give our answer in the form of p by q minus ln 4 right so in this form we need to write down the answer the area of a trapezium in terms of fraction is 231 divides 32 and keep this area in terms of fraction as well we need to subtract it so how can we find the shaded area so this trapezium it is 231 divides 32 and then subtracting this area so this is minus 3 by 4 and minus uh, 3 ln 4 so this, if we subtract minus 3 divides 4, this would be 207 over 32. So 207 divides 32 minus 3 is uh, in the power of 4 and 3 power 4 power 3 is 64. So ln 64. So this is P by Q and uh, minus ln R. So P is 207, Q is 32 and the R value is 64. Question number 11. In A part, the diagram shows the velocity time graph for a particle P. This is velocity time graph traveling in a straight line with a velocity V meter per second at a time T seconds. P accelerated a constant rate for the first 10 seconds 
uh, of its motion and then travels at a constant velocity of 30 meter per second for another 15 seconds okay uh, next 15 seconds from 10 to 25 okay p then accelerate at a constant rate for further 10 seconds 25 to 35 and reaches a velocity of 60 meter per second uh, p uh, then decelerate at a constant rate and comes to rest when time is 55 seconds now for the first part find the acceleration when the t is 12 okay so 12 lies between 10 and 25 and at that point the velocity is zero and keep in mind acceleration is the gradient of velocity the derivative of velocity so between 10 and 25 we have t equals to 12 and at that time the velocity is constant and the derivative of constant is zero so we can say that acceleration is acceleration is gradient of velocity right at uh, t equals to 12 velocity is constant and acceleration is equals to zero because the derivative of uh, constant is equals to zero now for the second part find the acceleration when time is 50 okay where time is 50 so we have uh, 35 40 45 50 and 55 so here the time is 50 okay so for this uh here the time is 50 we need to find the acceleration basically the gradient we need to find so we can use any line that is parallel to this 50 so using this triangle or this triangle we can get the same gradient right so for this the gradient we can say is uh, change in y over change in x the y value is 30 over this is 30 40 45 55 uh, 45 50 and 55 so here we have 45 so 45 to 55 we have just 10 so this is 3 so we can uh, say it's uh, the gradient is 3 but since it is moving down so here the acceleration value is negative 3 it is deceleration so we can say that the acceleration at t equals to 50 is negative of 3 right now for third part find the total distance traveled by the particle p so the total distance traveled so keep in mind the distance traveled for the velocity time graph is ad under the curve right we need to find the area for this curve and then add them up we will get the distance traveled okay so let's break it into different portions so this is a right angle triangle this is a rectangle this is again a triangle and this a rectangle and this one okay now for this shape what is the area let's say this is shape a shape b c d and e okay so we need to find the area for all these one two three four five shapes right so for the first one the area is half base times height it's a triangle so the area is half base is 0 to 10 is 10 and the height is from 0 to 30 is 30 this is the area so we have 10 times 30 and then divides to this is 150 so its area is 150 right now for next we have for b length times width the area is length times width so length is 10 to 25 uh, this is 25 minus 10 this is 15 and the width is the same 30 so 15 times 30 is 450 right now for this length times width again area is length times width so length is the same uh, the width is 30 times 25 to 45 so it is 45 minus 25 is 20 and 30 times 20 is 600 now for this again half base times height base is this the same this is 20 and what is the height height is from 30 to 60 that is 60 minus 30 that is 30 so we have 30 times 20 divides 2 is 300 
point. Now for the last, uh, this is again a right angle triangle. This is half base times height. Height is 30 and the base is 10. 45 to 55 is 10 times 30. So 10 times 30 divides 2 is 150. So let me add all of them. This is um, 150, 450, 600. Uh, it's 30. I guess, no, it's uh, 300. Yes, 20 times 30 divides 2 is 300. So it's 300 and it's uh, 150. So right, let me add all of them to get the area under the curve. So the, the distance traveled is uh, the sum of 150 plus 450 plus 600 plus 300 plus 150. We will get the total distance traveled by the particle. So let's add them up 150 plus 450 plus 600 mm, plus 300 plus 150. So this is 1650. So 1650. This is a total distance traveled by the particle. Part B. A particle Q travels in a straight line such that its velocity v meter per second at time t seconds after passing through a fixed point O is given by this. So that's the velocity we have given. In the first part, find the speed of that particle Q when the time is 5 pi by 9. Okay. To find the speed, we need to just substitute the d value into the velocity to get the speed. Right. So we have uh, v equals to 4 cos 3 and t value is 5 pi by 9 and minus 4 right so we have uh, 3 times 5 times 180 divides 9 we have 300 so we need to find cos of 300 times by 4 and subtracting 4 cos 300 times by 4 subtract 4 so it is negative 2. So we got the velocity that is minus 2, but the speed of that particle is 2 meter per second. Why? Because speed never be negative. Speed is a scalar quantity. It has magnitude, but it does not have any direction. Velocity and acceleration is a vector quantity. It can be positive or can be negative, but speed never be negative. So the speed is 2 meter per second when the time is 5 pi by 9. Right now, for the second part, find the smallest positive value of time for which the acceleration of that particle Q is zero. We need to find the smallest positive value of time when the acceleration is zero. So, we have given the velocity. How can we find the acceleration? The acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Right. So let me differentiate it. 4 is a constant. The derivative of cos is minus sine. So it is minus sine 3t and it's 3 and the derivative of minus 4 is just 0. And we need to put that acceleration velocity, sorry, acceleration equals to 0. So that's the acceleration, put it equals to 0. So we have 4 times 3 is 12 and minus 12. Minus 12 sine 3t equals to 0. So from here sine of 3t equals to 0, right? So um, if we say that theta is 3t, right? So we can say that sine theta is equals to 0, right? Okay, now sine theta equals to 0. So we need to find on which quadrant the sine is positive. It's just 0. So the sign is positive in the first quadrant. All trigonometric ratios are positive and in the second quadrant sign is positive. And here we use theta and here we use uh, 180 minus theta. Right. So sign is positive in the first and the second quadrant. So if we use uh, theta that is sign inverse of 0. So what is sign inverse of 0? That's just 0. So we got theta equals to 0. So from here, theta value is 0 in the first quadrant. So for we can say first quadrant, we have theta equals to 0. And in the second quadrant, we have uh, theta is uh, uh, pi 
is minus 0 that is just pi so we have two values for theta that is 0 and pi so but we uh, need to find the values for 3t because theta is 3t right so if theta is 0 and pi so what theta is 3t that is 0 and pi so what are the values for uh, uh, t so t can be 0 by 3 and pi by 3 from here t is 0 or pi by 3 so on these two values uh, the acceleration is 0 now we need to find the smallest positive value for time and the smallest positive value for time is t equals to 0 because pi by 3 is a more value so at we can say at time equals to 0 acceleration is equals to 0 right now for the third part find an expression for the displacement of q from o at uh, time t so we need to find the displacement the displacement is let's say s is a displacement this is integration of velocity with respect to time so let me integrate the velocity that is 4 cos 3t minus th uh, 4 and dt right so 4 is outside the integration of cos is sine 3t divide 3 minus 4 and then t and then plus some constant right okay how can you find the value for constant so we can find the constant by using the condition that when time is 0 the displacement is 0 there is no displacement when time is 0 so using this condition s is equals to 0 we have 4 by 3 sine 3 times 0, sin 0 is 0, minus 4 times of 0 plus c. Sin 0 is 0, 4 times 0 is also 0, so the c value is 0. c is equals to 0. So we can say the expression for the displacement of the particle is s equals to 4 by 3 sin 3t minus 4t because the constant value is zero so that's the expression for the displacement of the particle so that's the last question of our paper if you have any queries please let me know in a comment section and please subscribe to my channel thank you for watching see you next time take care